Well done. It is a huge honor for me to welcome all of you to this iconic venue, a venue that is befitting of an event that is going to be talked about for a very long time. This stands to be the most watched combat sports event in modern history, and that is no hyperbole. This is the real deal. It all goes down July 20th. Saturday, July 20th at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, of course, the home of the Dallas Cowboys for the first time ever. And yes, I, I do agree with that sentiment as a Bills fan, but nevertheless, for the first time ever, the largest streaming platform in the world, Netflix, you heard of them. They have never before streamed a comp- And so yes, here he is in just his 11th pro fight. The man who a few years ago was doing a bunch of skits on Vine. Now he's gonna step into the squared circle in a pro boxing bout. Eight rounds, two eight minute rounds on the biggest platform known to mankind. The one and only, the problem child, El Gallo, Jake Paul. Jake Paul, everyone. Now, so they can tell you how it happened. My family left it. My fucking family ain't left it, little white motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, wait, wait, wait. Ball. We got a fucking ball. You see a white boy with a ball, you know? Well, I know what I'm doing. Fuck you, motherfucker. The palm ain't worth a billion. I'll be in a kid. such a big deal. He needs three intros. There he is. The one and only Jake Paul who of course co-founded Most Valuable Promotions for the Chiefs of Bedaria. They are promoting this trade event on July 20th exclusively on Netflix at AT&T Stadium. This is really in fact happening. So three parts of the co-main event are here. There's just one more person left to introduce. You all know who he is. He is one of the most iconic figures in the history of sports. At one point, he was known as the baddest man on the planet, and if you ask me, that title sticks with him from now until the end of time. The most ferocious, the most feared striker in the history of boxing. In the 80s, we all played the video game. If you were around in the 80s, I certainly did. And now here he is, stepping into the squared circle, about four years since his big return fight against Roy Jones. He is gonna do the damn thing, perhaps for the very last time, against this guy. This guy called him out, Mike Tyson. And if you've seen the clips, is taking this challenge very seriously. Let's talk about the one and only, the pride of Brownsville, Brooklyn. The baddest man on the planet, Iron Mike Tyson. Tough guys don't last long in boxing. This is a thinking man's game. Wanna be a tough guy in this boxing game? Punch. Thank you, Jay. Tremendous stuff. And of course, the media and the fans and attendants will have an opportunity to talk to these gentlemen, so uh, have no fear. I do want to ask a question or two to the champ. Katie Taylor, the pride Katie. of Ireland. Always great to be in your presence and looking forward to your return. Uh, this is such an interesting fight because, you know, the, the hardcores, Katie, at first weren't quite sure what to make of it all. And then you and Amanda got put in the co-main event slot and everyone was like, wow, how did this happen? What an incredible opportunity for you guys in women's boxing. How did it reach your doorstep? How did this all come about? Um, well, I just got a phone call from my manager, Brian, um, a few weeks ago saying I was going to be on the same card as Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. And this is a... Uh, that's a dream for me. Um, I think last year my family had said to me, what do I want to do before I retire? Is there anything I want to, want to achieve in the sport? And uh, or, or anybody who I'd want to meet. And one, uh, one of the things I said is uh, I'd love to meet Mike Tyson. And here he is, he's signed me an icon of the sport, a legend of the sport. And, um, this is just incredible. 
she had a friend, a friend of mine, one of my pigeon friends in Ireland named Kevin McKinley, the good friend of us. He would tell me to say hi to him. Wow. Yeah. Is this the first time you guys meet? Yes. yes. Wow. These are two legends in their own right, meeting for the first time on the dais of a car that you're both going to be competing in. Uh, just, he's just your legend and icon of the sport. And I grew up, uh, I fell in love with the sport in the 90s, and the, Mike Tyson was uh, the biggest name in boxing during that time. He was ferocious, um, he was super exciting to watch, and he's a real historian as well. He, I love your knowledge of boxing, I love listening Thank to you. his speaking, and I just cannot believe I'm sitting next to Mike Tyson right now. <laughs> I'm pinching myself. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, you know, I hope. Like there was once a time where Katie had to dress up as a boy because uh, being a youngster in Ireland, women's boxing wasn't allowed. That's how determined, that's how much she wanted this, and now here she is on well, this platform. That's why she has the belt. Yeah, that's right. Now, of course, this fight is at 140 pounds. How do you feel at this weight? You got the big win over Chantel Cameron, you avenged the loss, as opposed to your more traditional 135 pound weight. Uh, yeah, I feel really good at this weight. I think it's... Uh... Uh, lots of women fighters do go up and down the weights, and so uh, I do feel very, very strong this week. Um, the last fight myself and Amanda fought, it was an, an epic fight, it was an iconic fight. It was in front of 20,000 people in Madison Square Garden. It felt like the whole of Puerto Rico and Ireland were there in the, in the stage during that night. Now, we get to do it again in front of 100,000 people, and um, this is amazing for the sport, live on Netflix. Just thank you so much to MVP uh, for, for giving us this opportunity. This is absolutely iconic. It, it surely is. Uh, let's talk to your opponent now, uh, the pride of New York and Puerto Rico, who I have to say, of all the fits up here, man, uh, I love the Patrick Ewing jersey that you are rocking. Let's go next, baby. Big game tomorrow night, but massive fight for you on July 20th. First, the last time we saw you, a heartbreaking scene, I know, in Puerto Rico. Could you tell us how are you feeling? Any issues with the eye anymore? I'm 100% fine. It was the eyelid, it was in the eyeball, so I'm completely fine. So <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. And ready to go July 20th. I want to thank everybody um, MVP, my trainer, Jordan Maldonado, Netflix, everybody, even Katie Taylor's team for making this happen. You know, I'm super excited. We're going to be fighting in Jerry's world. So I'm excited and I can't wait to July 20th. I have become a two division on the Scooter Champion. What, more, what more can I say? Puerto Rico! press I'm getting to you, don't worry, I know you're not just here to hear me ask these great people questions, but I did want to ask you this question because that fight on April 30th, 2022, you know, uh, I think March 8th, 1971 is maybe the most iconic date in the history of MSG boxing, that's Ali Frazier one, I think what you guys did on April 30th, 2022 is up there, that's one of the greatest scenes that I've ever been able to witness and experience, and I felt like over time we were moving further and further away from the rematch because you were doing your thing at 126 and the three minute rounds and now she's at 140, and so was there a point where you thought you may never get a chance to avenge that loss to Katie? I think it was always going to happen because Katie's and my name is always going to be attached to each other no matter what. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be uh, a part of this, um, to be alongside with Katie Taylor. You know, she's a great champion. But we're going to go out there and, and prove to the world that we deserve this platform. We deserve the pay that we're getting and that women can fight. And we're going to give, I think, a better fight, um, the rematch, because now she knows how to lose. I don't like you losing. We both don't want to lose. So we're going to go out there and give it our all. And it's truly an honor. I want to say... I never thought that I would be standing, I was fighting on a co-main event with Mike Tyson. It's truly, they both, both these men up here truly inspire me um, in, in my sport. Um, Jake, obviously, is my manager, and he's helped me completely change my life, my career. So I am truly honored to be on this part. Amazing stuff. If you happen to be a new fan of the sport of boxing and you didn't see their first fight on April 30th, 2022, please do yourself a favor before July 20th and watch that first fight. One of the greatest fights, men or women, that I have ever seen. Incredible stuff. And if the rematch is even half as good, we are in for something special. All right, yes, let's take sir. some questions from the media. Uh, raise your hand if you have questions for any one of these fighters, and then they will bring you over to the microphones on the left and right of the Beautiful venue here. I will wait for the queue. We have a queue. I'd rather die a short life of glory than a long life of obscurity.
idea for promotion. Hello, Mike. How are you? This is great. What an honor. This is incredible stuff, guys. Once again, July 20th, Netflix. Pre-sale right now. Tickets go on sale March 16th. Excuse me, May 16th. That's just uh, in a couple of days' time. Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern over on SeatGeek.com. Mike, I'd be remiss if I don't start with you, my man. Living legend. Who would have thought you fighting on Netflix in a fight that spans... Four generations. It's an unbelievable thing. Can you explain to the public, explain to the world why this intrigued you, why you ultimately said yes to a fight against Jake Paul? Well, it was a no-brainer. It was just, um, he was a new up-and-coming guy on the scene. And um, I like um, shaking the sports world to its core, and I'm doing it now. I, I, it's just something I want to do. And so there has been a lot of talk about your age and the age difference between you two. Yeah. What do you say to the critics? What do you say to the detractors? What do you say to the people who are saying, quits, you know, frankly, you are too old to be fighting a guy who's 28? Well, I'm beautiful. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's good enough for us. You do look to be in great shape. How is the training camp going? Because we see the 30-second clips with Rafael Cordero and your whole team. But could you give us a little more insight into how things are going? I'm doing great, but my body is shit right now. I'm so, yeah, I'm really sore. I think you're playing possum. No, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look to be in fantastic shape, and it's great Thank to see you, you up Thank here. You. Jake, how hard was it to put this fight together, to get him to agree to fight you? It sounds like he was game from the jump, but how hard was it? Yeah, no, he was game. I think he's always wanted to do this. This has been a long time coming. We've been calling each other out for years, and we finally got to make it happen on Netflix, the biggest platform in the world, and things just keep on getting bigger and better. The co-main event, I mean, this is quite literally history that we're looking at right here, and Mike wanted this. Mike wanted it to be a pro fight. He wants the war, and so I respect that. I respect them for taking this fight, for stepping up to try to put an end to me. Because that's what all these fighters have been trying to do is end the YouTuber. And if Mike can do that, then he's a hero. Is that is that the goal here? Are you trying to put an end to Jake Paul? Well, no, um, I, I really like Jake a lot, you know. But, but once he's in that ring, you have to fight like his life is depending on it because it will be. The sentiment seems to be that, Jake. Every person that I speak to who's around kind of my age says, I hope Mike Tyson, for lack of a better word, beats you the hell up, right? I mean, just like completely ends your boxing career. Do you sense that sentiment from the public as well? For sure, I think it's 50-50, you know? I, I truly believe that there's a lot of people who, you know, see me as an arrogant asshole, which I can be sometimes, but I'm just having fun and entertaining the world. And I do think that the older generation wants people to see Mike knock me out, but at the end of the day, I also have the kids, the middle schoolers, the high schoolers, the college students rooting for me and want to see me and Mike. Yeah. What about this deal with Netflix? How did this come about? Unprecedented, never before. This is their first entry into the world of live combat sports. How did you and Nikisa get it done? Yeah, look, it's, it's most valuable promotions that have been changing the game since we, we came into the promotional business, and we just continue to level up and do things differently and see gaps in the market that no one else has identified. And we wanted to work with Netflix. They liked the idea and see the vision and what we're building, what type of events we can put on. And this is quite literally the biggest fight of the 21st century because of the fact that it's Mike Tyson versus me, but also the fact that it's in 700 million households, Netflix for free. First undisputed champion, the hail from Puerto Rico, competing in her 50th pro fight, Amanda, the real deal, Serrano. Tremendous homecoming 
in Dublin about exactly a year ago. She ended up rematching the woman who beat her on that night to become the super lightweight champion. And so on July 20th, the Olympic gold medalist, the multiple time amateur champion, the two weight undisputed world champion will put her 140 pound titles on the line against that one of, of woman of course i'm talking about the pride of Bray. of course i'm talking about the patron saint of the emerald isle the one and only katie taylor there she is shout out to katie taylor everyone wow what a great honor this is i can't believe we are getting this fight on netflix incredible i'd rather die a short life of glory than a long life of obscurity How are you? This is great. What an honor. This is incredible stuff, guys. Once again, July 20th, Netflix. Pre-sale right now. Tickets go on sale March 16th. Excuse me, May 16th. That's just uh, in a couple of days' time. Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern over on SeatGeek.com. Mike, I'd be remiss if I don't start with you, my man. Living legend. Who would have thought you fighting on Netflix in a fight that spans... Four generations. It's an unbelievable thing. Can you explain to the public, explain to the world why this intrigued you, why you ultimately said yes to a fight against Jake Paul? Well, it was a no-brainer. It was just, um, he was a new up-and-coming guy on the scene. And um, I like um, shaking the sports world to its core, and I'm doing it now. I, I, it's just something I want to do. And so there has been a lot of talk about your age and the age difference between you two. Yeah. What do you say to the critics? What do you say to the detractors? What do you say to the people who are saying, but, you know, frankly, you are too old to be fighting a guy who's 28? Well, I'm beautiful. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's good enough for us. You do look to be in great shape. How is the training camp going? Because we see the 30-second clips with Rafael Cordero and your whole team. But could you give us a little more insight into how things are going? I'm doing great, but my body is shit right now. I'm so, yeah, I'm really so. I think you're playing possum. No, I'm not going to wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look to be in fantastic shape, and it's great Thank to see you, you up Thank here. You. Jake, how hard was it to put this fight together, to get him to agree to fight you? It sounds like he was game from the jump, but how hard was it? Yeah, no, he was game. I think he's always wanted to do this. This has been a long time coming. We've been calling each other out for years, and we finally got to make it happen on Netflix, the biggest platform in the world, and things just keep on getting bigger and better. The co-main event, I mean, this is quite literally history that we're looking at right here, and Mike wanted this. Mike wanted it to be a pro fight. He wants the war, and so I respect that. I respect them for taking this fight, for stepping up to try to put an end to me. Because that's what all these fighters have been trying to do is end the YouTuber. And if Mike can do that, then he's a hero. Is that is that the goal here? Are you trying to put an end to Jake Paul? No, um, I, I really like Jake a lot, you know. But, but once he's in that ring, you have to fight like his life is depending on it because it will be. The sentiment seems to be that, Jake. Every person that I speak to who's around kind of my age says, I hope Mike Tyson, for lack of a better word, beats you the hell up, right? I mean, just like completely ends your boxing career. Do you sense that sentiment from the public as well? For sure, I think it's 50-50, you know? I, I truly believe that there's a lot of people who, you know, see me as an arrogant asshole, which I can be sometimes, but I'm just having fun and entertaining the world. And I do think that the older generation wants people to see Mike knock me out, but 
at the end of the day, I also have the kids, the middle schoolers, the high schoolers, the college students rooting for me and want to see me and Mike. Yeah. What about this deal with Netflix? How did this come about? Unprecedented, never before. This is their first entry into the world of live combat sports. How did you and Nikisa get it done? Yeah, look, it's, it's most valuable. Confidently say that you're going to knock his ass out, Mike. You're going to knock his ass out. Let's go. Then I can confidently say that you're fired. <laughs> hey, Jake, on the face of the company, you know you can't fire me. I am better. Security. Mike, Security. my only question is what round are you going to knock him out in? Hey, come to the fight. I hope you can afford a ticket. <laughs> I can afford a ticket. It's on sale, by the way, on uh, May 16th. That's this Thursday on SeatGeek.com. Go ahead. <laughs> But I, I will say that uh, a couple weeks after the contract was signed, we got a call from Mike's team. And they were like, hey, he wants to be a pro fight for sure. Let, he, he wants that. He wants to put it all on the line. And so I respect Mike for that. And if he wanted it to be that, then, then let's run it. By the way, Mike, I wanted to ask you about something that Jake tweeted earlier today. He said, last time I saw Mike was two months ago. He was chill. Rumor is he's not so chill now. No weed, eating raw meat. Let's see today. Is that an accurate assessment of where you're at? Are you not so chill? I'm pretty chill right now. Yeah, you seem pretty chill. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, let's keep going. Go ahead. Uh, it's Saquon Jones with the Boxing Voice. Uh, this, is my, this is a question for Amanda, but let me say that I was at the Madison Square Garden with Amanda and Katie, and that was basically WWE. I've never seen anything like that. The atmosphere, everything was great, and I do commend you ladies for putting on a great show. Amanda, uh, you're coming up almost like 14 pounds. Can you talk about how much that weight is gonna affect you going into uh, this fight? Listen, everyone knows I'm the featherweight champion, unified featherweight champion. Um, I've said it many, of time, many times, um, anything over that, it's, um, it's hard for me. Obviously, 135, I can make it, but for the opportunity to fight Katie Taylor, I, I took the fight. Now, the same thing. 140, her team said, gotta do it at 140. I really want the fight. The fight is for the fans. So, uh, greatness requires sacrifice. So, once again, I'm sacrificing my body. I'm sacrificing everything to go up three divisions. The last time was two divisions. I believe I won. I hurt Katie. Um, I think going up another division, I can do the same thing. My power is going to come with me. And, um, you know, it's just a, this is a great opportunity for both of us. And I, it is what it is. I just got to eat more. <laughs> how are you going to put on that weight? Where are you going to put it, first of all? Like, how, <laughs> how, are you, how are you going to put that weight on? You got perversion going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Latina, so I get to eat a lot more rice. <laughs> And it is worth noting, seven-time oh, or seven-division champion, current unified featherweight champion. So she knows a thing or two about moving weight classes. Uh, are we going over here? Yep, there we go. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sean Rizwan, and my question is for all the fighters during your respective camps. Did you have a go-to pump of song? During your respective camps, did you guys have any go-to pump-up songs? What did he say? Did you have any go-to <laughs> pump-up songs? During your camp, do you have any songs that you like to listen to to pump you up? Funeral music, okay? <laughs> what about you, Katie? Same as my guy. <laughs> it's crazy, because I've been listening to funeral music, too. Wow. <laughs> Make it four for four, funeral music, too? Yes. Wow. It is. They're all in sync. Tremendous. <laughs> Let's go. Take your power away. Excuse me? Can Jake take your power? We're gonna see, huh? Are you impressed with him? With what he's been doing? Have you Excuse been impressed? Me? Have you been impressed? Oh, I'm very with him? impressed with him, yes. I'm very impressed with Jake. Would you say that his defense is pregnable or impregnable? Well, I don't think of that, but I think I'm very impressed with what he accomplished, yeah. Fair enough. Alright, we'll take uh, one more question from the media. Go ahead. Mike Feldman with GiveMeSport.com. Amanda, the first fight, MSG, the next fight, Jerry's World. If and when you knock off Katie, would you do a trilogy and how much bigger could it get? I mean, we'll see. We'll see that night. Um, if Katie wants it, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Once I'm um, just concentrating on this fight, I'm concentrating on, on making the 140 and going out there and giving it, giving it my all. Well, what happened in the first fight? Uh, Katie won a close fight. What are you talking about? 
think Amanda's going to okay. come Katie out. Katie won, won a close decision. It was a split decision. Very so. close. Okay. I didn't see the fight. Oh, you should see it, Mike. Incredible stuff. Katie, would you be open to that? Obviously, you don't want to yeah, think of... Yeah, well, let's ask the audience who they think won that first fight. <laughs> <laughs> in your mind, do you think that we're headed to a trilogy, or are you trying to put this rivalry to bed? Well, I'd be willing to every fight when I'm planning on winning the fight, so the tri trilogy is on my mind right now. I beat her first time, and I plan on beating her the second time. I never had this much fun at a press conference. This is a good time, yeah. right, Mike? Welcome yeah. back. Thanks. Stick around. Stick Great around. being around. Um, we're going to take some questions from the fans, so I can't vouch for these. I don't know how crazy they're going to be. And uh, we've got a young boy right over here, so you're up first, my man. Yo, I'm Kim Warren, and uh, I'm a big fan of both of y'all. You guys are boxers like me coming up. You feel me? But Jake is his own person. He's not like any other, any, anybody else but him. He, he started this YouTuber stuff out, and he made it successful. And we're going to see how far it's going to take him. Who would train me better, Jake or, Jake or you, Mike? Who, me, definitely me. <laughs> uh, yo, Jake, what are you thinking of? I think uh, older fighters have more heart and balls and weren't afraid, but I think the newer fighters have more skill and technique and are sharper. So that's why I'd be a better coach. Hey, shit. So, so, so you think he has bigger balls? Who, who do you think's got a higher body count? What's your body count, Jay? <laughs> person to enter. So wherever you are, Brandon, who I saw earlier today, well done to you. 6 a.m. this young man was standing in front of the door to get in here first. All right, let's go back to the fans. Hey, my name is Tess. I'm from Manhattan, and my question is for Katie. What advice do you have for women that want to learn how to box? Um, just go for it. I think that the hardest step uh, sometimes is just the first step into a boxing gym. I'm out there, um, being vintage Amanda Serrano, going there to fight every second, every minute of every single round if it has to go 10 rounds. Great job. A couple more fan questions. So far, so good. Yeah. Uh, my name is Chris Ben. From the Bronx, New York. I'm 26. Uh, Jake, nice to meet you. Um, but my question here is for Mike. Before I even get into it, huge fan of WWE as well. I see Logan Paul here to the left. You're doing really good at what you're doing. Keep doing it. Um, but Mike, yes. you've had a very long career. You have faced some of the greats. You have knocked down many of the greats. What's the importance here with your career and your longevity? How important is this fight with Jake Paul to you? Well, very important. Um, just the fact that he's taking the fight, taking the opportunity to fight me is... Um, it's mind boggling, you know. When you really think of it, um, from a boxing perspective, it's like God status. It's never been anything like it before. Yeah, well, you know, good luck to you, gentlemen. Jake, hope you can take a hit or two, man. You know, you're going against one of the toughest hitters, but maybe a question for Jake. Do you really believe? Give him hope, you man. Come on. God, man. You can't give a YouTuber hope at this point. It's 2024. So, Jake, do you think you can take a hit from Mike Tyson? Yeah, look, they call him Iron Mike Tyson, but I'm Titanium Jake Paul. Oh, all right. Good luck, gentlemen. Put that on a shirt. We got another one over here. All right, good afternoon. Hello, Jake. Um, I'm Xavier. I'm, Queen. I'm from Queens. I'm 16, right? Uh, I grew up watching you and Logan. Thank you guys for, you know, making my childhood, right? Um, <laughs> Right, like you mentioned earlier, Jay, uh, you know you got the high school was rooted for you. Um, you know I'm rooted for you. Mike, please don't kill me. Um, <laughs> um, thank you guys. But my question to you, Jake, is um, for some for for the youth that wants to pursue boxing and wants to pursue fighting but can't afford it, what do you think would be the best steps to take? Yeah, look, we're. Uh working on getting more boxing bully gyms across the, the world. Um, we have 
you know, a partnership with a gym in Brooklyn. I don't know if you can make it out there, but at all of our Boxing Bullies gyms, people can go for free. Uh, but man, just do what you can. You can shadow box at home, work on your footwork, push-ups, pull-ups, continue to improve your athleticism. And if you're 16, you know, hustle. Sometimes to start off, you're gonna be ha having to do two things, three things, working a job and hustling at night. So that, that would be my advice and to just not stop, don't give up and, and your opportunity will come. Yeah, like you said, I am doing a couple of things. I want you to know, I'm I was training under him at one point, um, but you know, eventually the money gets to you. So it's like it's, I can't believe we had a press conference. Well, I'll I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll have my team uh, get your contact oh, after, yeah. and I'm gonna send you a bunch of gear and stuff. Thank you. Thank you. More of like a people's conference, you know. Oh, yeah, so, forgive me. And, I'm an old dude. This is new. This is wild, right? <laughs> Netflix. This Netflix wasn't new. even a thing when you were fighting. Oh, huh. it is now, I guess. In a big way, yes. Very big, very big. Very yes, big. 270 million subscribers worldwide. Yes. yes, and we have them all. Yes. Most watched combat sports event of all time. I agree. It's going to happen. <laughs> July 20th, AT&T Stadium. I do think we have room for one more fan question. Do we have room? No, Mike is waving me off. All right. Uh, sorry, guys, we don't have time. I see you up there. And look at this great... Look at this great... Shout out. All right. Now, let us say hello to Mr. The man behind all of this, the co-founder of Most Valuable Promotions, Mr. Nikisa Badarian. He's going to square off channels. And one more thing, SeatGeek.com is where you can get the tickets. All right, Nikisa, let's bring him out to square off these incredible fighters. Make some noise for everyone. First up will be Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. Last time it was at 135, this time 140 pounds for Katie Taylor's undisputed super lightweight titles. You see them right over there. She won those belts back in November in an incredible fight against Chantal Cameron. This will be Amanda Serrano's 50th pro fight on the biggest stage of all time.
Entonces vamos a romper la revancha. Un knockout le vamos a dar a Kenny. No, espera, acuérdate lo que te lo dije. Y en 140 libras, subiendo tres divisiones, papá. En la casa de Jordan. Amanda te amamos, ¿ok? Amanda, subimos tres divisiones y con tu y eso vamos a noquear. Amanda, Puerto Rico en la casa. Amanda, voy a ti para doble, Robinson Warrior. Okay, okay.